I'm Stephen Slade and I live in Houston, Texas where I practice. Um, I do corneal, refractive, uh, and cataract surgery. I've been in practice 25 years. I was the first in the U.S. to have a femtosecond laser for flaps, which was interlace of course, and that was, oh gosh, 10 years ago. And then um, I also had the same opportunity. We uh, had the first femtosecond laser for cataract surgery, uh, and that was in February of 2010. So over two years ago now. It really takes cataract surgery uh, in, into a digital uh, environment. Uh, it's more precise, it's more accurate, uh, it's more reproducible. It really does the first half of the cataract surgery, the first steps, um, as opposed to doing them manually. I, I, I think it offers advantages to the patient in visual recovery, and visual outcomes, stability. Uh, I think there's um, unique safety aspects to it. Uh, it it's a, uh, certainly something that the patients seem to get, uh, that it's a laser that's being used um, with their surgery along with the surgeon. Um, and it, the patient acceptance is uh, extremely high. It's a disruptive technology, certainly. You have to find a place to put this large box. You have to train yourself. You have to train the staff. It's not a big learning curve, but certainly it's disruptive to us. And that's the key. It's, it's disruptive to physicians. For patients, it's not at all disruptive, which is exactly the right kind of technology then. Uh, the patients just um, understand that a laser is being used on their eye. As far as, uh, again, a learning curve, it's not a difficult learning curve. It's, there's some subtle differences in technique. Uh, there's patient flow. There's you know, the logistics, where you place it, uh, you know, how long it takes to do, the kinds of patients, counseling, billing questions, but all, um, all, all well worth it. For the surgeon, after the laser, has been applied. And of course the laser will do the incisions, the capsulotomy, and crack the nucleus. After that has happened, the surgeon goes through his steps of identifying the incisions, identifying that the capsulotomy is complete, uh, opening, uh, spreading out the nucleus. Um, and, and after that, it's, you, you pretty much do the second half of the surgery. You need to alter your instruments, you need to alter your FACO settings, just like you have to alter your patient flow, billing, counseling, um, the whole bit. The specific um, part that the surgeon does, of course, is the docking. And then in the surgery itself, once they go into the OR, the first steps are more of recognizing what the laser has done. So the speculum for the docking is, is different. We use a, a Slade Murdoch speculum. Uh, it, it's a different one than what we would use in cataract surgery. Uh, when we go into the operating room, we use a, um, a speculum that, the same speculum we've always used, a, 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 a Baracare wire speculum. Um, you're identifying incisions now and completing and ensuring that they're open. We use a Slade spatula for that to open the primary, to open the secondary. Uh, we use different forceps to identify and ensure that the capsulotomy is complete. We use uh, different spreaders and choppers, a cobra chopper to uh, open up the quadrants of the nucleus. So it's, the steps are done. The laser um, does, again, the first half of the cataract surgery, but the parts that the surgeon does at first is identifying and ensuring that these steps are complete, and then finishing out the traditional FACO, the cortex removal, the placement of the IOL. In many of our cases, we don't hydrodissect. In other cases, we are gently hydrodissecting. Different cannulas for your hydrodissection uh, can be a big benefit. Um, different instruments to come into the eye. Different instruments to handle the nucleus. This nucleus has been 
uh, divided for you. It's been conditioned for you in ways that you decide. So you need a different way to address the nucleus, different instruments. Um, there are subtle differences. They're not harder in technique. You do need to pay attention to them and the end results are um, apparent at day one. We changed all of our FACO settings. Uh, we use um, a, a different setting now for a pre-FACO mode where we come in and core out a central core of the nucleus which is created by the laser. We use a, a different CHOP setting to pull out the first quadrant uh, into that space that we've created with the central core. We use uh, different uh, but similar settings to uh, take out the four quadrants. Even removing the cortex is subtly different. It's um, sort of more of a uh, centripetal motion than a centrifugal motion. You're moving more under the capsule. There's not the tags that you may be used to because the cortex itself is cut at the same time that the capsule is cut. The lens um, really isn't different, except you're putting in now a perfectly positioned and perfectly circular capsular opening. Same, um, you, can, you can use the same eye drops postoperatively. That didn't change. I've had exactly the opposite experience. Uh, it has added. My outcomes are better than they've ever been. Um, not only in absolute uh, visual acuity outcomes, uncorrected, but speed of recovery, how well they see it day one. Certainly it's controversial. Uh, I believe I mentioned the disruptive word. Certainly it's um, something that, you know, if you might not want to um, adopt right away. I, I totally understand all of that. But there is science now. It is accumulating. There have been multiple published papers. Uh, there are three textbooks coming out this year on the subject. I would simply uh, ask everyone who has an opinion about this to look at it scientifically, uh, evaluate it on that basis, and go by what we're supposed to do, the scientific method. People come up with an idea, uh, femtosecond laser cataract surgery. They believe that this might offer advantages. Uh, they begin to stack data up around that concept and experience. And the, um, the correct way, if you have a differing opinion, would be to gather data that would refute that. It's and, and that's the best thing that could happen. We're supposed to do that. We're supposed to critically evaluate it. So the people that um, uh, have doubts about it or you know, don't believe in its value, um, that's exactly really what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take a technology or a technique or a concept and debate it scientifically. So what should be happening is happening. They've improved the outcomes in just about every way in our data. In our data, we have uh, less endothelial cell loss. We have clearer corneas at day one. We have a quicker return to vision. We have better visual acuities, and we have better accuracy, not only in the spherical component of the lens because of the stability of the capsulotomy, capsular opening, and the um, reproducibility of that, but we also are treating astigmatism on virtually every patient that has it. And you know, it's, it, it, it highlights the importance of astigmatism, certainly this laser. You have a group of patients that you've delivered excellent results with glasses. I mean, if somebody comes in for glasses, they're going to get to see 2020. Excellent results with LASIK, contact lenses. Now they come up for cataract surgery. If you treated three quarters of a diopter of astigmatism, for them with glasses, contact lenses, or LASIK, wouldn't you fix that when they have cataract surgery? Of, of course, it's what they're expecting, it's what you have conditioned them to expect. So you're treating astigmatism. 
If you would put it into the eczema laser to do LASIK, you will put it into the femto laser to do cataract surgery. Um, that gives them better uh, results astigmatically. So they, they have much better vision uncorrected at day one. What's happened, uh, as I mentioned earlier, what's happened with cataract surgery as a result of the femtosecond laser is that it's made this leap to a more digital environment, to a digital environment. It's, you can only go so far with um, a pad and pencil, whereas once you have a, a laptop you're to that, it's, it's just a matter of time before the software is programmed, before you do whatever you want. So what that means is that we now have other technologies that can be brought into cataract surgery. The femtosecond laser is an enabling technology. So other technologies now, different diagnostics, heads-up displays, real-time display of the astigmatism, dialing in a toric, uh, such technology as the WaveTech Aura, the, uh, these aberrometers, Clarity, all of these can now be used um, it, it, to even improve the results more. Uh, it, it's bottom line, it's an enabling technology that will bring a host of other technologies into play for the patient.